Thank you very much. What a nice welcome. I'm very happy to be here, and uh, and uh, it's just nice to see everybody in a group. You know, I keep meeting two people or three people, and uh, those of you that don't know me, my name is Dick Lord, as Vic said, and I happen to be the finest comedian in the medium price field. <laughs> we had many surprises tonight. Jerry Lee Lewis was supposed to be here tonight, but he cannot make it. He is in Paris awaiting the birth of his next wife. Julio Iglesias was supposed to be here, and just as he was leaving his hotel room, all the girls he loved before showed up. <laughs> so he's back on the road again, and later tonight, Mel Tillis, Barbara Walters, and Charo are all going to walk out here and try and pronounce the word aluminum. <laughs> I had a nice day. It was a nice week, wasn't it? Yeah. Very pleasant. I'm sorry that we're, I'm leaving when you're leaving. I'm very sorry about that. And, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you a joke. A cruise ship is embarking, streamers are flowing, champagne is flowing, and nobody notices a little boy. Falls off one of the upper decks into the water and he's drowning. And seconds later, everyone notices an elderly man. Flying off the captain's bridge into the water, scoops up the little boy in his arms, swims to the shore and saves the boy's life. And there's a meeting at the captain's cocktail party, and the captain introduces this elderly, brave man. He says, sir, you saved this boy's life. Is there something we can do for you? A lily man says, no, thank you. Captain says, you saved us from a tragedy. Would you accept this cruise as a gift? And the elderly man says, I'm rather wealthy. You could give the money to the Seaman's Fund. Thank you very much. And the captain says, is there something we can do for you? And the elderly man says, yes. Perhaps you might know. Who pushed me? <laughs> Of course, I've been reading the news from the States, and uh, many ex oh, in unbelievable things are happening. I've noticed this. I don't know if you've noticed this. Now, when an infant is born, not only is the father of the child allowed into the delivery room, but he may videotape the birth of the infant. And I think this is wonderful, because later on in life, when your child says, I didn't ask to be born... You put this tape in backwards, boom, the kid is history. <laughs> I suppose people here went to visit where, where Elizabeth Taylor once lived. Elizabeth Taylor, very interesting person, as we know, recently married for the eighth time. And experts say that by the 21st century, we will all be married to Elizabeth Taylor for 15 minutes. President Bush's popularity keeps going down. Matter of fact, Dan Quayle says if it goes any lower, he doesn't want him on the ticket. <laughs> Lady goes to a doctor for a physical examination, going to get married. Doctor wants to give her words of good advice. He says, never completely disrobe in front of your husband. Always wear something that'll turn him on and watch you forever. Couple is married six months. Husband turns to his wife. He says, honey, is there any history of insanity in your family? She says, no, why? He says, I don't know. Since we're married, you haven't taken off your hat. <laughs> silly, silly. Lady goes to a doctor for a physical examination. Doctor says, madam, you're cranky and you're irritable. And we don't have any medicine for this, but I would like to prescribe something that will make you feel zippy and make your husband feel zippy. This month, I wish you to have relations 20 times. Lady runs home, says to her husband, I just came from the doctor. The doctor said, this month I should have sex 20 times. Husband says, mark me down for two. <laughs> I'm on a roll. Lady goes to a doctor for a physical examination, comes home, starts to pack her clothing. Husband says, where are you going? She says, the doctor told me what I give you for nothing. I could get $200 a night in Atlantic City. <laughs> Husband starts to pack. She says, where are you going? He says, I'm going with you. I want to see how you're going to live on $400 a year. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm happy that you're laughing. That's why I'm in show business for laughter and applause. And I'm in show business for several other reasons. First of all, there's no heavy lifting. <laughs> and secondly, it is a search for approval. 
because I have a very strange background. My parents are gypsies. And when I was four months old, I was stolen by a wild band of Jewish accountants. <laughs> and my parents were mean. My mom refused to breastfeed me. She said I was only using her. <laughs> and my father tried to show off with me in front of his friends. He used to say to me, walk to grandma, walk to grandma. Grandma lived in Poland. <laughs> An embarrassing moment. The ex-bride and I were taking a walk and she tripped and sprained her ankle. So we went back to the hotel, we're unpacking, and she notices she's forgotten a backless bra that she must have with this dress. So she asked me to buy it for her. Now, I don't know how many gentlemen here have ever purchased a brassiere. Probably none of you, unless it is your industry, or unless you like to get dressed up on holidays. <laughs> so I walked into a lingerie store. Sales lady said, yes. I said, I need a bra. She said, what bust? I said, nothing bust. She sprained her ankle. I'm doing her a favor. <laughs> Woman did not even smile. Nothing, nothing. She said, what size, sir? So I don't know. I felt like saying something crazy. I said, seven. She said, seven? I said, that's right. I measured with my hat. She said, look, sir, walk around the store, and when you notice someone shaped like your wife, just walk over and say, excuse me, what size bra do you wear? I was in the store six days. Finally, I see someone shaped exactly like the bride. I walked up, I said, excuse me, sir. I am happy that you're laughing. I mean, I mean, after all, we're going to spend some more days together. You know, it's not going to leave after the show. And, uh, and I'm also happy that you're laughing because sometimes people do not wish to laugh. They have other priorities. Things that are going on in the world today, war, conflict, life, death, inflation, recession, the stock market. I am personally not worried about a stock market. I happen to have 244,000 shares of Xerox stock. Actually, I have one share, but I Xeroxed it. <laughs> I really like being here because it gives me an opportunity, as I say, not to, not to leave after a show, but to meet many interesting and nice people. And I've learned that we really are all basically the same. We have the same dreams and hopes and families and desires and fears. And of course, we really all are the same. I'd like to ask you all a question about my oldest son. Why is it when he was five years old, he knew exactly what he wanted to be when he grew up? And now he is 25 years old and he has absolutely no idea. What made him forget? When he was 10, he wanted to be a doctor, 15 a lawyer, and now one college costs $20,000 a year, he can't find himself. <laughs> Why doesn't he look in a cheaper neighborhood? That's my oldest son, and I'm proud to announce that he is for sale. <laughs> he is a professional college transfer student. He has 11 credits, in 11 semesters from 11 Caribbean colleges. Kid hasn't said a word to me in a year and a half and his major is communications. Well, I have lots of kids, my lovely daughter, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> what a hardworking girl. On a report card our teacher wrote, she's the student most likely to tan evenly. I have another son who is very thin, thin. He walks around the house with his arms in the air. He looks like a fork. <laughs> Years ago, springtime, the bride said I want him to play Little League Baseball. 
I said, why now? She said, baseball, dreams, travel. I want that kid out of the house. A game for our children or our grandchildren. Little League Baseball could take over the world. Kids today have teams, they have uniforms, they have equipment, they have stadiums. They have everything, and I think they're spoiled. I remember I went to one Little League game. I see a kid get a hit. He didn't even run to first base. His mother drove him there in a station wagon. I never had that. I grew up in New York. I played a game in the street called stickball. Any stickball players here? Sure. My position was second sewer. And we never played nine innings. We played till Sheldon had an asthma attack. But today, if you have a child on an organized team, you must buy your child equipment. Hats, bats, gloves. Sweat socks, sweat pants, sweat shirt, sweat jacket with a sweat hood. I spent $314 and that little rat would not sweat. <laughs> I got so angry I yelled so loud one night the poor kid sweat his bed. <laughs> I think we worry about the wrong things with the young people. We worry about the generation gap and how they don't understand us. I think the young people today are very smart and sensitive and aware, and I think they see us as we are, and I don't think there's a generation gap. I think it's the opposite way. I think there's a jealousy gap. We're jealous of them, because they do things that we never thought of. It's true, I'll give you an example. I was drafted into the army. Who knew you could turn it down? They sent me a letter, greetings, Dummy, I went. <laughs> Who knew I could go to Canada and my grandmother would mail me an allowance? <laughs> I got out of the army and I got married. Today kids don't go in the army and they don't get married. They don't want to fight at all. <laughs> but they believe in love, so why do our generations pick on them? because the younger people believe in love differently than we were allowed. Today, boys and girls live together in school. They have co-ed dormitories. Then they get out of school and they live together again. We were not allowed to do that. So when we see them doing that, we're jealous, but we can't admit that. What do we say to them? You can't do that! That'll kill your grandmother! <laughs> Nonsense, grandmothers do it in Florida on social security. I'm jealous because I couldn't get away with it. I wasn't young enough, and I'm not old enough. <laughs> what are the gentlemen here tonight? We're in the middle. Our gen I never got away with anything. I went to college the wildest thing I ever did. I went on a panty raid. Big deal. You get them home, they never fit right. <laughs> and what did we know about what did we know about living with women? It was a sin. God would strike you dead. What would the neighbors say? If you were going to live with a woman, you were getting married. I'll never forget the first woman I wanted to marry. I was a teenage kid. I met her in New York City while walking down 8th Avenue and 42nd Street. How can I explain this? Uh, we were not really introduced. She leaped out of a doorway. She was wearing 15 pounds of eye mascara. She was wearing a complete lipstick. She looked like Senor Wincy's fist. She dragged me into a hallway, ripped off her clothing, and said, be gentle, this is my first time. I believed her, I was crazy about it. I brought her home to meet my parents. I said, Ma, I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Baby Hernandez. They rushed my mother right to the hospital. My father knew her. She 
says he still owes her fifty dollars. <laughs> Today the world is more progressive. My children attended a progressive school where they get a lot of vacations. Columbus Day, the entire class flies to Spain for a month. You're all successful, intelligent adults. I ask any adult here to help a child with homework. I don't care how smart you are, what you have achieved in life, what your educational background is, it is impossible. Because they study subjects that we never had. My son studied Northern Rhodesian sculpture techniques. Aerobic sushi making. Contour plowing in the East Andes. And they don't care about long division, fractions, multiplication tables. They buy a calculator for five dollars. They don't have to learn anything. All they need in life is a battery. I said to my son, quick, if I take five apples from ten apples, what's the difference? He said, that's how I feel. What's the difference? I said to him, who invented the light? He said, Michelob. <laughs> Wherever we went to school, all the schools were the same. Tall, stern schools with tall, stern teachers. And do you remember this? There was always a teacher who seemed to only own one dress. And it could be 40 years later. When you think of her, you remember her in that dress. I remember her in my school, Miss Kritzler. Miss Kritzler wore the same maroon dress from the kindergarten through the eighth grade. Every day. What a homely woman. She looked like a blood clot. Homely woman. She was hit by a car. They left the car there and towed her to the body shop. <laughs> but she looked like the principal. If you saw her in a supermarket, you would know that's the principal. Today the kids wear jeans. Teachers wear jeans. You can't tell kids from teachers. And you can't tell a school from a resort. I didn't believe my kids' school. Acres of landscaping around the school. Central air conditioning in school. What central air conditioning? We had Arnold with a window pole. <laughs> Remember that pole with the hook? Arnold the window! Then he would hang up there because he was short. We laugh because it's true. It's not even a joke. It's just true. And I think that the true things are the funniest things. Things we see in everyday life. And we don't notice they're funny because we're involved in everyday life. For example, why don't they let us eat off the blue plates? Yeah. For example, after the show, if you wander to this elevator and you look up in the right corner, there's a plaque and it says this elevator capacity is 14 people. Maybe 14 Vietnamese boat people. I only hope that the same person that determined that is not the same person that determined how many people get into the lifeboats. The real things are the funny things. For example, on a highway near my home, there's a sign. And I'm sure wherever you live, you notice this sign. On the side of the highway, the sign says, Bump! They had to dig a hole. They had to put the pole. They had to paint bump on the sign. They had to fasten it, maintain it, and pay for it. Why don't they just fix the bump? Wherever we live today, we live near a shopping mall. 163 stores under one roof. So 
So the other day I'm walking through my local mall and I'm passing a jewelry store. And there's a sign in the jewelry store window. And I read the sign, I walked away, I started to laugh. So I thought I read it incorrectly. I went back, I read it again. I read it correctly. It took me a second. I really think it's funny. I certainly hope that you think it's funny. In the jewelry store window, the sign said, Ears pierced while you wait. What choice is there? You're going to drive by Monday and drop them off? I'm walking through the same mall and I'm passing a carpet store. And there's a big sign in the carpet store window. It said, We pay high prices for old Orientals. So I called my friend Jimmy Wong. I said, Jimmy, is your grandma out of the hospital yet? There's nothing funny about income tax, except there is. There's an oblong slip of paper. You list the number of dependents in your family in a box, and on the bottom line you sign your name. It's withholding tax. I swear to God, Line 5 really says this. If you are over 65 years of age or blind, write the figure one in this box. <laughs> Comes from the United States government. I would like to ask you nice people this question. Did anybody here ever go to the bathroom in a bank? No, I don't think they have them. I think that's why they close at 3 o'clock. Maybe that's why people take out safety deposit boxes. <laughs> Last Saturday I was having lunch with a friend. He picks up his sandwich and his fingers all bandaged. I said, what happened? He said, I got a paper cut. He says, you know, the worst kind of cut you can get is a paper cut. I don't know, I think a machete is worse. <laughs> you imagine walking down a lonely street, a guy says, okay, stick him up. I got you covered. I got a paper. <laughs> well, I think about things that nobody ever thinks about. You know, I make myself crazy. Do you think Yasser Arafat has a brother called No Sir Arafat. <laughs> Do you think when a cow laughs, milk comes out of its nose? <laughs> Do you think we should put pictures of lost adults on liquor bottles? <laughs> Do you think Boy George is the illegitimate son of Tiny Tim? We celebrate George Washington's birthday. A very interesting man. He had wooden teeth. He could pick his teeth with his teeth. <laughs> if the great Orson Welles was sitting there choking, who could give him the Heimlich maneuver? Could you sit over here? I have been thin and I have been fat. I am trying to work my way down again. So being both, I have truly noticed this. Fat men get no sympathy. It's true. If a thin man dies in bed, they say, Oh, poor man. He's finally at peace now. Fat man dies in bed. They get angry. They say, Sure, what did he choke on a sandwich? <laughs> thin man gets hit by a bus. They say, oh my, driver couldn't even see him. <laughs> Happens to a fat man, they say, what did he kill everybody on the bus? <laughs> because people get angry at all the wrong things. Did you ever notice how angry people become when you dial the wrong number? And the guy on the other end of the phone starts to yell and scream at you like you've interrupted his heart surgery. 
and you, you apologize a lot. Next time it happens, yell back. I did that the other day. I dialed the wrong number. Big deal. A guy says to me, you dialed the wrong number. I said, I dialed right. You're in the wrong house. Go home. <laughs> this ever happened to you? You're trying to call someone, and you know who you have to call, but you forgot the number. So you call the information operator, and she gives you the number, and then the operator says, have a nice day. And you say, thank you. And you hang up the phone, and you forget the number. <laughs> so now you have to call back. Well, when I call back, I'm always afraid I'm going to get the same operator. So I disguise my voice. She said, have a nice day. I said, thank you. She said, next time, write it down, stupid. <laughs> this ever happened to you? You're trying to call someone, and the line is busy, 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 10 minutes, busy, 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 20, busy, busy, 30, busy, busy, 40. And you say, I'll try just one more time. And you immediately try, and there's no answer. <laughs> what happened? What'd the guy do, throw himself out of the nearest window? <laughs> the real things are the funny things. How come when I go to a restaurant that serves me a salad in one of those little round salad bowls, lettuce and tomato, oil and vinegar, I'm happy it's fine. So how come if I have dinner where there's a salad bar, I build a 12-story salad condominium <laughs> with bacon chips for the roof? Yeah, little corns become shrubbery. A path of three bean salad. And cottage cheese and potato salad and onions and coleslaw and all the salad dressings. And then I take the little cherry tomatoes and I pile them all over my salad. And when I put my salad on the table, the little cherry tomatoes roll all around the table. <laughs> Have you ever noticed with those little cherry tomatoes, no matter what you do to them, bite them, fork them, cut them, they will squirt on your shirt. <laughs> if you are wearing a napkin, they will unzip your fly and get you on your shorts. <laughs> birthday cakes are funny to me. Imagine it's your 50th birthday, 50 candles on your cake, 75 people standing around, blowing and spitting on your birthday cake. <laughs> and people just can't wait to get a slice. Imagine if you were having a cheeseburger and 50 people came over and went <laughs> The real things are the funny things. Remember when we were kids, we wore earmuffs? Remember earmuffs? On the outside, they're soft and furry. And on the inside, there's a metal spike that goes through your head. Why don't they put the spike on the outside? Gentlemen, when we go to the store and we buy men's socks, they're always on that little hanger. Who has closets that small? <laughs> Ever take off your jacket and in the back it says, professional dry clean only? Who the hell does this for a hobby? Did you ever notice this? The only time you ever look like your passport photo is during a hijacking. 